Risiko. <laughs> Hello, and today we're going to uh, talk about the topic emigration, um, because we emigrated in uh, 2020, so two years ago, um, actually almost, uh, no, it's not to the date, but the decision was to the date, because we, um, when we had the lockdown in Germany, uh, we did uh, quit our rental contract um, and uh, basically book tickets uh, to fly to North Cyprus with our son so um <laughs> we already had booked the tickets but we come to this point yeah we're, we're, go <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna come to that point because that's a that's a whole different story but yeah. it, it's it's about uh it's less about where we migrated to yeah um it's uh it's more about um why we did it um and with that i turn it over <laughs> to you yeah well, the reason why we want, uh, wanted to leave the country is basically we just did not feel comfortable in Germany anymore. So, and um, we wanted to move to another country. To for a better understanding, is we lived already like um, during our um, studies, um, and uh, we did an internship in in the U.S. So we lived in San Francisco. We had three years in France. So we were always really open to live in other countries and to, you know, to uh, we were curious. Uh, we love to learn about different cultures and um, just, you know, learn more about the world. And yeah. um, after we lived three years in France, coming back to Germany, it felt great for the first year, I think. And then it started to get like really small <laughs> and uh, yeah, we just did not feel really comfortable in, in Germany anymore. So, and then um, we came, uh, we get an opportunity to visit North Cyprus. And at this time, like, um, well, we said, why not? We had like, our son had holidays and I love to make um, like in the holidays, I always try to think what I can, what I can do to combine work time and, uh, <laughs> and family time that um, because there's obviously another routine than um, if the son is yeah. uh, in school or in nursery pre-nursery at this time and uh, we said well okay let's go to North Cyprus and figure out what it, this is for a country and this, this time we were there because of the real estate op opportunities yeah so I, um, I asked my mom Jan Mark and me, we were on board, and uh, of course, our son. So, uh, all four of us, we flew to uh, North Cyprus and figured out about a country. We had no idea about Cyprus. We were super curious. Uh, at this time, like Cyprus was not even in our mind to, to move to. And we were really open. We said, well, okay, if you're going there, we will see if that would be a place we could imagine to live. And there were some, like, of course, everybody has, like, when, when they want to do something, they have a checklist, what they have on, you know. The what pro you, and con list. <laughs> exactly, what, they, uh, what has to be there and what's not. And there were really good reasons to be in Cyprus. And after three days, we made a decision, that's the right country, we want to be here. And um, one of the reasons is, for example, as well, that um, we wanted that our son learns English on a really early stage, because we yeah. had um really problems to learn english and even though we were in the us for a while well you then this is uh, was your start uh, with english and you had to, <laughs> to speak english every day because yeah. of your job and um well for me i came back to germany i had no really um i don't want to say i want did not have time to practice but not really the opportunities and i was not even looking for that so uh, i started then five years ago again um <laughs> with speaking and learning English and um, we wanted and it was really tough for us because like learning a language was not basically our nature we're really good at numbers but languages are not really uh, well, our strength our, yeah our our highlight and our <laughs> preferred thing so we wanted to make this better for our son and was already looking for an international school and the schools here um, there are British schools and this was really um, a big big plus Plus, of course, that we have a lot of sunshine here on this island. and um, Definitely more than in Germany. Exactly. And um, well, and then we get asked a lot of times why North Cyprus, because this is out of, outside of Europe. And I said, exactly, that's the point. It's outside of Europe. And on the other side, we need 20 minutes to the border to be in Europe again, if we want to have it. So um, this is, and with a European passport, to be honest, it's really easy um, to travel. 
yeah. for us. So um, this is, it was not really a, um, yeah. Um, it wasn't difficult. It wasn't That's difficult. It was really an, an easy decision. So we said, well, we feel comfortable here. It's um, a country with what is not everything is um, already developed. There's a lot of potential in this country as yeah. well. It's a totally different lifestyle. Um, and um, like in North Cyprus, they speak Turkish. So it's a totally different language as well and a different culture. And um, all these things, we just said, well, it's, it's like a bubble here. So you can really live and, um, you know, enjoy um, the family time. And at the same time, because we can work remote, uh, we have the time and the possibility to, uh, to work wherever we want. So the only thing what we need is internet. Yep. And this is one of the, <laughs> this is sometimes a little bit uh, tricky, um, but for this we have generators and um, yeah, so and the, make the things happen. <laughs> the, the problem is less the internet; it's more the power. Yeah, um, that sometimes you just have uh, have power cuts, which on islands uh, happen quite regularly um, because of the uh, of the grid uh, and how um, power grids uh, work. But that is like a total different topic, and it's really boring to be honest um, <laughs> if you are not a fanatic on how power grids work because there are some that wrote their phd on that and they live for how a power grid works and how to make it different um, but it's <laughs> when 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 we're looking back is the um the decision that we that we made there um of course is a is a big one and i and i jokingly said it's like yeah this pro and con list um, but um, decisions have like two things and immigration or immigration, depending from which side you want to look at it, has uh, like has both sides of it. One is the, the very organized one where you go like, OK, I have a pro list, I have a con list. <laughs> um, and then the other thing is what you what you should be doing um, and what, what we have done is we had the must haves and then the nice to haves. So because it's like and the no goes and the no goes because if uh, if like whatever country or wherever you go and visit and it doesn't fulfill the must haves or it has some of the no goes or even one of the no goes then it's for us it's regardless if it has like the nice to haves because then that is like irrelevant if I have to live with something I definitely don't want to live with or I'm missing something like for example internet that like the internet speed, let's say, would be really, really slow here, which it isn't, it's medium kind of thing, um, then that would have been a no-go. I mean, there, there are areas here on this island where for us it's like a no-go to live um, because you don't have a reliable internet connection yeah. in that part of it. So I, I think those, that, but this is the structural side. And then there is this emotional side where you say, can I see myself living there? Yeah. Um, and uh, especially we, because we get, uh, we get asked very often um, how we could make a decision with our son. <laughs> like, because it's like as, if, as, as an individual, if you are single, no responsibilities, then like the only responsibility you have is yourself. And it's pretty easy to migrate. And if, if you succeed, it's great. If you fail, you change the country. If you don't like it after two weeks, you go somewhere else, whatever. I mean, yeah. as a single, that, that is easy. As a couple, it's still pretty easy as long as you are kind of on the same page of what you want to have and what you're looking for. You still can like switch really, really fast. If you have a kid, it's different. Um, because if you arrive in, a, in an apartment and then you uh, and you are in an area you don't like, um, you might make if it's really critical for you, you might make one move after two weeks, after four weeks, and say, "Hey, this is like this is a no go. We can't do this. We need something else." But if you are um, if you are then wrong, then you don't change again. Then because then you you have to take into consideration kindergarten. And school, and one of the things, uh, one of the mistakes, an example we made in the beginning because we simply didn't know, is we were living on one side of a city, and the city uh, here is uh, Corinna or Gierne, um, and it's only thirty something thousand officially inhabitants. I think there are quite a lot more, to be honest, that are temporarily coming in um, because they are then not registered as an inhabitant 
but they they come in, they go, they stay a month or so. And the school is on the other side. So we were on one side, the school is on the other side. Now, because it's an island, there's a coast and behind us some mountains and geographically seen. So you need to go through the city to get to the school. Yeah. And <clears throat> that's something that we would definitely, when we go today to another country, we would check that. We didn't do it because we thought, well, it's like, it's not far. It's like, 30 minutes, it's, yeah. it's like well, it's like 10 kilometers or something yeah. like that. So it's like in Germany, that is not a distance. Like 10 kilometers is what you drive like to the supermarket sometimes <laughs> if you want to go to a specific one. Um, but what we didn't took into consideration is that we always have to go through peak traffic and then in the morning it was okay because we were a little bit early because our, we, we paid that our son comes earlier uh, and can go earlier so he he arrived we arrived before the traffic so it only took uh, like half an hour 45 minutes round trip um, in the evening uh, that could even easily turn to one and a half hours uh, with total traffic he might fall asleep um, uh, in the car and then we had like if you have small kids you know what I'm talking about and then you have all the trouble related to it afterwards because there's still shower and dinner and so it's like all of this so we didn't check that um, and that is definitely something we would do differently um, today but um, nevertheless when when people ask us why do, do, how can you do that with a kid we're like how can you not and it's like <laughs> yeah. it's, it's more organization but it's still, you can do it. It's, is it easy? It's Not necessarily. It's the structure, basically. It's yeah. the structure. And um, to be fair, like um, what another question that people ask us, how we can make this in, in like with the lockdown <clears throat> and the Corona times. Hmm. So the decision was made already like one and a half years before uh, when we were here. Okay. Um, yep. And this is may maybe really important to know because we just had to wait until it was for our son the right time to to change because he was in the nursery and um, it was a switch from nursery to kindergarten and um, that was a specific time point and then we could stretch it as well for three months in this case so and this is yeah. what we did if we wouldn't have like basically we would be I think before even before the first lockdown we would be here already but we said, well, we need a little bit yeah. more time to organize everything. So let's stretch the three months and then we are going. And um, we booked the flight ticket already in December because I, I had no idea why, but I had the feeling I have to book the tickets now. So I wanted to book the tickets now in December that just to make sure that everything works uh, fine. Yeah, and um, it was over the Christmas holidays. It I was believe. over the Christmas holidays, yeah. And it was for August. So, um, and then we had already, we, we, we drove because like, you know, uh, send what you want to the universe. Uh, so make things happen and take action. So we said, we wrote already the cancellation statement uh, for our, um, uh, for our landlord. And um, we just put it, uh, you know, on the wall, on the wall that we could see it. And uh, when it was time, like three months before, usually in Germany, then you send it. So this is what we did. And the three months were just exactly in the first lockdown. So um, we had the flight, the flight booked already. And we asked ourselves, well, are we willing to do that? Like, because we had no idea what's coming um, yeah. in, this, in this early stage. We had no idea like uh, what Corona is, how we can, like how everything will develop in this um, afterwards and all the things like that. And we said, well, we made this decision. We do it. We yep. do it, and we sent out the tenant uh, the, um, the cancellation, and two days later our flight was cancelled. <laughs> so you can imagine, like our feelings, our emotions was not really like really high at this point. We we got, of course, I would not say we would get scared, but it was like a strange feeling. Of course, like worst case, we had our family around us. We could uh, we would have a roof over our head yeah. and. We always think, okay, what's the worst case? What's the best case? What happened most likely? And um, in this case, we did the same. The worst case we could live with. So um, what we what we did um, is just like we got this uh, this information and <laughs> we went online again and booked a new flight. It was two days later than before, but uh, we just booked a new flight. And uh, this is what we did. And uh, then there was no way around because like if you have a flight. And uh, if you cancel your apartment, you start to move. If you don't put yourself in this situation no. um, that you don't have to change and see what's coming and how everything is developing, 
then nothing will happen. So you have to put yourself in the shoes or the situation that you have to move. So if I send out the cancellation um, letter, then obviously um, I have to make the house and it was a huge house. So we had to do a lot of things at home that, uh, that we can move out. Then I had to start to organize everything that we can move out at this day no. because uh, he will look for another tenant. We have definitely to leave this house. And um, that's another story. If you would take the plane or if you just rent another apartment in Germany, that's like, and this is, I think a lot of people like misunderstand this step by step if you make one decision doesn't mean that you have to, to do the full journey directly you can make decision by decision step by step just because we said okay we don't want to live in this house anymore doesn't mean that we have to take the flight to cyprus okay we just made a decision step okay we are moving out of this house worst case if we don't go to cyprus is we have to find a new place short term to find a better place on the long run that's the first thing. Yeah. So nothing really happens. So always think if you make this kind of decisions, what's really the worst case? And then when we are here and we are and people ask us why we're not buying something for our own. Well, because we want to be flexible. If we don't like it here, we pack our stuff and we move to another country. What's the problem? There are flights. If I'm flying for a vacation or if I fly out for emigration, <laughs> you know, that make no difference. Well, the luggage is a little bit hefty, but um, that's the only thing. Yeah. <laughs> the, the luggage is a little bit different. But on the other side, there's not really like book a plane ticket, go to another country and the rest you can al always organize. So that's um, like, you know, always think what's the worst case. And if we don't like it here and if we want to go back to Germany, well, it was a great adventure. We go back to Germany and then we might be in Germany. It and, will not and, be the case. Don't worry. <laughs> we really love it here. And we would love to show you the island as well if you are interested in North Cyprus. So um, just in case uh, you say, well, North Cyprus, I never heard about that. Definitely a place uh, to look at. Yeah. And, and I mean, uh, because you are saying like only the luggage is more. And to, to be honest, if it comes to worst case, it's not. Yeah. You, you would just like pack the most important stuff yeah. into your uh, into the suitcases that you that you have and then you would move and everything else well that would then just go either to trash or you would sell it or or whatever are there then maybe emotional attached things maybe maybe that's the case um but um usually there's always a solution uh, that that can be found in order to like get those uh, get those things moving and I think is like a lot of people when they when they think about and, and maybe you are the same when you think about like emigration or even moving like a, a bigger distance I have people I talk to in Germany that I couldn't imagine to move from Cologne to Stuttgart yeah right and this is like it's in the same country it's the same structure it's like kind of the same rules yes the the culture is a bit different between those parts but it's not dramatically different it's still germans to germans um so um it's like when you think about that don't think about like all the things that that could go wrong because everything can be corrected it's not the it's not the end of the world it um it might cause there's a saying that if you move like three times it's like one like like when your house burns down once and it's probably true if you think about when you have to buy new furniture and this and that yes that is true because normally if you buy a, a, a table um then you can have that table for 10 years 20 years there's no need the table is usually not going to break even if you bought a cheap one yeah. um so if you move every three years of course every three years you need a new table maybe or you rent furnished so i think like th there is this impact but if you think on the other hand about everything that you see that you experience um isn't that also what life is about and not that like you save on a kitchen table yeah. i mean this is this, this is the thing and this is like also when we when we made that uh, that decision we said it's like okay like like you said it's best case worst case and what's going to happen most likely and most likely is what actually happened it wasn't the best case <laughs> no. uh, because there, like what happened with school and there are a ton of other things that happened um, that 
we said like, okay, that's definitely not the best case, but it wasn't the worst case that it didn't work out because we're still here and we're, we're not back. Um, so it's some, <laughs> and we still like it here. So it's and not we still that, like it here. So yeah. it's somewhere it's somewhere in the middle. And I and I think this is the 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 thing is you you make that decision and then you live with that decision and then you are just like you have to adjust. There is going to be especially if you like switch. Uh, different countries there is sometimes like a like a culture shock what people call a mm. culture at least in Germany they call it like that if in English maybe it's different um, but there is like a, a clash because you are used to something and it's like maybe totally different here it's like for us for example as if you say in Germany I'm there at 11 you are there at 11 maybe at 11 5 but you would call 10 minutes earlier and say hey I'm seeing on my navigation <laughs> system I'm arriving five minutes late to inform the other person here, if they tell you they come at 11, they Might usually, come up at one. It's like if they come at 11, 15, they are usually really on time. <laughs> then sometimes they show up at 12. Sometimes you text them at 12, where are you? And they are like, yeah, I'm coming next week. Um, so it's like, <laughs> th these are things you have to, like you have to get used to. Otherwise you can't, you can't live there uh, because you go crazy. Yeah, the grass is not always greener on the other side, no. you know, like there's just like different things you have to handle and but the things in germany for us uh, what we had to handle was not like that was not well, negotiable anymore like i we didn't want to like it, it became basically a no go we wanted we didn't want to handle this anymore and we preferred to handle the small things and well to organize ourselves a little bit different but enjoy um, you know a house we have a pool now like our son uh, can swim after school whenever he wants he has different opportunities he he speaks uh, english fluently and german fluently obviously and understands turkish he has a lot of russian friends now as well so when he's when he ends school like he has already four languages uh, yeah. which is a blessing like this is like this is a gift we could not give him in germany so and uh, all this like different cultures coming and going and all the things what's what they're doing here with children as well no it's amazing of course they're on the other side they have more holidays they would have in germany <laughs> so this is the at other least thing the feeling to, yeah. yeah this is uh, maybe the other thing um but you know he gets older it gets easier as well it was a struggle in the beginning and as well in lockdown we had different rules of course yeah but uh, for us it was like better like it felt better than it would have in germany like oh. what we know so far from from our family and friends there so this is but it's not that we had not to suffer it's just like what we had to deal with was okay like um yeah and yeah and i, and I think i think when you when you reach that decision and uh and say i want to i, I want to go to another country yeah um we definitely recommend uh, to, to do that. I mean, you heard it. We, we've been in the US before. We've been in, uh, in France before in Grenoble. Um, so, I mean, all those, uh, all those things, they just, they, uh, they enrich you because you learn different things. You, you find things that you love. You mm -hmm. find things that you hate, to be honest. Um, <laughs> and this is, uh, this is totally okay. You have them probably in your, uh, in your home country, uh, as well as like there is I don't believe that there is such a thing like a like a perfect country yeah. you just learn to live with the things you do not like um, and you enjoy the things you you like and you love and I, I think is that is definitely worth looking at it um, take take a trip to that country start asking questions start getting connected with uh, with locals but also with expats that are living there because it's a very often it's a difference if you are local and a citizen or if you are an expat. Uh, it's also a difference if you move to Germany, if you are German or if you are from any other country. Um, so is that, uh, check out those things. I mean, um, a lot of people, uh, especially here, there are Facebook groups. There are like um, a lot of things that you where you can find information on and not so much on Google, by the way, uh, which is kind of amazing and weird at the same time. Um, so because they organize a lot via social media um, and then but I, I think it's in every other country it's it's the same if you want to migrate to Germany um, it's the same you can find those expat groups and things like that so as I like connect there uh, do a like a, I wouldn't say a sightseeing trip because it's not about seeing the sites but like an experience 
let's call it a first-hand experience trip. Um, and then you can you can explore, find explore. A, exploration trip. Yeah. yeah, would be the right word. Um, and then you find out if you can imagine that. And very often within the first couple of hours and sometimes for us, it took like two days or something Three like days, that. Yeah. Yeah, on after the third three, day we made the decision. On the third day we made the decision, but we already had a tendency after like one or two days. So, yeah. and then you just go with your gut, um, and then you make the arrangements. For us, it took like one. The process took one and a half years, so it's not. But it's we have heard from people that like came in and uh, November, November and and moved in December. Yeah, four weeks. Uh, so, so within four weeks. So I mean, but they don't have a kit. So yeah. that, to be fair, that that's that's what I meant. It's different. Um, so you can make that decision very fast. Um, then it takes time to implement depending on your, uh, on your status. If you have a job, if like you need to get your ducks in order, um, so to say, and then you, uh, and then you just, uh, you just do it. And if you don't like it, um, you just go back. Yeah. If you like, I totally agree. And um, I just want to invite you, if you are curious about uh, Cyprus or how we did it, like you are always welcome to reach out to us. And uh, we share with you our experience, ob obviously, and uh, of course. So um, if there are any um, yeah, questions, do you have like um, as well how we made it? Maybe you're, um, you're interested in going to San Francisco or uh, as well, Grenoble or like in France uh, in general. Yeah. And you would need some um you know like just a little bit more information um just let us know it's it was already a while and as you can see sometimes we can't remember really good but we still have uh, contacts there and we can ask and um yeah provide you this information you need and you are asking for so you're more than welcome to contact us and um well then we exactly. see us i would say tomorrow with the next topic exactly <laughs> bye guys bye.